Hello everybody and welcome back. As always, I am Mateo311 and this is your channel for everything VR related. So today we're going to be talking about all the really cool things you could do in virtual reality besides just gaming. There's plenty of extra cool stuff out there like working out or even getting your job done. So let's get into this video. There are of course links and timestamps if you want to skip ahead. But before we jump in, this video is brought to you by my sponsor, Kiwi Design. Kiwi has accessories for all of your favorite headsets, and they finally started releasing some new products for the Quest 3. On screen, we have their brand new extra comfy Quest 3 Elite Strap. I've been using head straps from Kiwi for years now, and they're hands down my favorite. There's a link to Kiwi down in the description, and don't forget to use discount code MATEO311 for 5% off and to help support my channel. Okay, so one of the first non-gaming applications that people realize they could use their headset for is their very own personal media center. The MetaQuest has most of your basic viewing applications, like Netflix, Amazon Prime, and Peacock. Now, we are still waiting on some other official applications like Disney+, Plus, but in the meantime, you could try the built-in web browser, but the overall experience will vary. There's also plenty of other excellent ways to consume media from a VR headset, including the online movie theater Big Screen, which not only allows you to go into a virtual movie experience, but also host one for you and your friends. Big Screen is an absolute must-try application, but if you want to experience videos that are only really possible in VR, there's applications like Xtadium, which allows you to watch sporting events with 100 degrees of freedom. This is also now an option on the YouTube application, so now you can go ahead and check out 180 degree videos. Now, if you wanted to stream more than just videos, you could get complete streaming access to your home computer with virtual desktop. You could not only load up all of your screens and control the keyboard and mouse, but you could also pull these items into your own virtual world. Virtual desktop is primarily known for accessing your Steam VR library from a quest, but the added benefit of being able to stream anything from your PC, including flat screen games, is an absolutely fantastic feature. Now, I know this video is all about VR beyond gaming, but I did want to take a moment to mention the fact that Virtual Desktop, Steam Link, and MetaZone Air Link each allow you to access flat and VR games from your personal computer. But even cooler is the fact that you get access to Xbox cloud streaming games directly on your Quest headset. So for the low price of an Xbox controller that you could connect via Bluetooth and a subscription to Game Pass, your MetaQuest headset now basically turns into a mobile Xbox. But back to non-gaming related topics, VR is also excellent for socializing. Maybe you're a little introverted, or you just prefer to meet new people from the safety of your house, well, this is where applications like VR Chat and Horizon Worlds could come in handy. Just pop on the headset and find the world that you think is interesting, which could become an immediate talking point for when you interact with people. The social aspect of VR should never be understated. It's more true to life and expressive than talking over a video chat, and some people have started living a whole second life in VR for better or worse. Now, if you're doubting that statement, this topic was actually covered in a documentary on HBO called We Met in Virtual Reality. Now, a newer social experience that I recently started exploring is online role-playing or LARPing. Last week, I covered the title Exia, which not only allows you to build whole worlds without any programming or Unity knowledge, but it also gives you an array of tools to help the role-playing experience. And unlike other applications like VRChat, it's designed solely for these type of interactions. So someone could build up a fantasy-themed world, a game master can host and run the overall experience, and then a bunch of people can get together and start improv -ing. Now, I know this definitely isn't for everyone, but I recommend you at least give it a try. Now, if you're more of a tabletop fan, the application Dungeonful Dive is trying to also emulate that experience. It's still in beta, and I haven't tried it in quite some time. But again, this is a whole toolkit for building worlds, a character creation system for players, and other built-in mechanics like dice rolling to help you emulate your favorite tabletop experience. Now, if you're just not a social person, that's okay, because VR is also excellent at self-improvement. There's applications like Piano Vision that use mixed reality to teach you how to play. It's actually surprisingly simple to get started, and an absolutely fantastic utilization of this technology. There's also a large array of different applications that you could use to either draw or sculpt in VR. So for the artists out there, there's applications like Vermilion, Painting VR, Open Brush, Sculpt VR, and Gravity Sketch. Now, I'm just naming a few here, and there's plenty more applications, including King Spray Graffiti, which allows you to go tag up the neighborhood. But one of the best self-improvement methods I've used my quest for is exercise. There's plenty of great VR applications that'll give you an excellent workout. Now, my personal favorite was the subscription service Supernatural because it has plenty of popular music, was constantly pushing out new routines, and most importantly, it was just really fun, making it easy to stick to day after day. Now, my second favorite workout app is Les Mills Body Combat, but honestly, most of the applications I've tried were all really good, so just go ahead and select the one that interests you the most. 
There's also plenty of games like Until You Fall that can act as cardio, but that's a whole nother subject that I'm not gonna get into right now. Now, another use case that hasn't really worked out too well for me personally is working in VR, but I know plenty of people who swear by this. There's applications like Immersed, which once again can connect you to your personal computer, but also just make it easier to move, organize, and resize your screens. Now, if you are lacking extra monitors and do have a Quest, there is a significant use case here, but for me personally, comfort is still the number one factor, and I just don't wanna wear a headset for that many hours at a time. Now, I have one more little bonus item that I'll give you in a second, but if I missed anything, guys, please let me know down in the comments what you use VR for besides gaming. I know there's one topic someone will definitely say in the comments and that's corn. Yeah, I am not getting into that discussion. Not at all. It's not like this is a family channel, but that's beyond what I'm willing to discuss to each their own, you know, just be safe and, and make sure you're private. I guess that was getting weird. Anyway, guys, let me know if I missed anything. Now that last item I want to mention is Google Earth. Google Earth is just this really cool experience that you could check out in VR. And if you are on the Quest, there's actually an app called World. It's basically Google Maps where you could bring your friends in and explore the map together. It's just a really cool experience. I don't know why, like just like Google Earth is cool alone. I, I used to look at it all the time as a kid. So I guess it just makes sense seeing in 3D now and being able to like move the map like that is just even cooler. I, I don't know. It's cool. Just check it out. All right. That was today's video. If you guys enjoyed it, that thumbs up uh, again, I really appreciate you guys. Uh, any comment, if you're new here, consider subscribing. And as always, I'll see you guys on next time.